Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to render this animation. This is the animation that we did covering uh, just keyframes and, and this is the graph editor. And we did a just a simple bouncing ball. And, and there it is. Um, if you wanna see this video, uh, this is the video that we did last time. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna stop this, uh, close the graph editor because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to uh, add some lights. It might speed up the process a little bit on this, but then uh, we're gonna render it after that, okay? So to add lights, I'm gonna go to rendering tab and I'm gonna add a couple of area lights. Uh, and so I'm gonna add uh, an area light, a couple of area lights, and then I'll see you on the other side. And so, okay, we've got the, the scene lit. I'm gonna just uh, make this a little bit larger. And uh, we've got our scene. We've got a backlight here. Uh, we've got the key light in front of us uh, lighting the scene. And then we've got also a, a fill light uh, underneath giving this a little bit of a, a highlight, like a bounce a bounce light from the ground all right so I want to go ahead and render this but I'd like to turn on some options uh, and the first option I'd like to turn on is the anti-aliasing I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing and you can see that hopefully you can see that uh, here in the stripe uh, if I turn it on or off you can see that the anti-aliasing is working um, I want to turn on uh, the ambient occlusion so that gives me a little bit more of a shadow when it hits uh, here, the ambient occlusion. I could turn on motion blur, but I'm not going to turn on motion blur. Uh, and definitely I want to be able to see the lights here and the shadows. So the shadows, the lights are turned on, ambient occlusion is turned on and anti-aliasing is turned on. I also want to see the resolution gate which is right now, right here. The resolution gate tells you what is going to render. Uh, plus it tells you the resolution. So this square here is what's going to render. Nothing outside will render. I can also turn on action safe, the action safe, and I can turn on the title safe. So anything um, in this, inside this line, will be safe any action or any title will be placed in see since I don't have any of that stuff uh, I just want to turn them on just so that I can see what's going on and I can see my resolution no so right now I'm ready to render I'm gonna save my scene and let's go ahead and get ready to render the first thing I'd like to do is go over the render settings the render settings right here it's the uh, the little um, slate icon with the gear so I click on the render settings, here they are. And so the first thing I wanna do is I want to choose the hardware 2.0. 
I want this to be a fast, quick test render. If I choose Arnold, it'll take a lot longer. So I'm gonna take a Hardware 2.0. And the second thing I wanna do is check to see where it's going to be saved. So right now we've got it in the project folder. Uh, and so I need to set the project folder, set project. What I'd like to do is I'm gonna set that project folder in the default project folder. All right, um, and the file name is called just bouncing ball. And so let's go ahead and apply the output transform to the render. Uh, the output file, the name, let's call it bouncing ball. Um, if it's not set, it'll use the scene name. So let's just call it uh, bounce ball. The image format, uh, let's choose, uh, you can choose any image format. I'm gonna choose JPEG. Uh, and you can see the, the file name is called now bounceball.jpg. Uh, and then this, we choose whether we output a single frame or multiple frames. The first two options are single frames and the last uh, one, two, three, four, five options are multiple frames. So I'm gonna choose the very last one. It's going to um, be the name of the file and underscore the number dot extension. As you can see, the name of the file bounce ball underscore the number of the frame dot JPEG, the extension. So the frame, frame padding is the number of digits. Since we only have 60 frames, I'm gonna take it down to two digits. So it'll be from one to 60. And then the image size. So um, here, frame padding, we start from frame one, end at frame 60, every single, by every frame, by every single frame. If I put a two here, it'll print or it'll render every other frame. So I'm gonna leave it at one. Uh, and then what camera are you going to render from? I'm gonna render from camera one. Uh, you might've noticed that I added a camera uh, to render from. And the, the uh, size will be uh, full HD. And I'm going to close my render settings. Uh, so we've got 1920 by 1080, uh, and this is my scene. Now to render, unfortunately, I don't think Maya can render a QuickTime movie. Um, I wish it could, but it renders out single um, images. So it'll render out an image sequence, then we have to composite in After Effects. So let's go ahead and render this. Um, go to the rendering menu set. And uh, under render, let's uh, do batch render. Now, render sequence is applied to a Arnold render, but batch render was applied to the hardware 2.0. So we're gonna use batch render. And you can see the results down here. It's rendering with hardware 2.0 and we can see how fast it renders here. Give it a second. There it goes. So um, 30, 40, 50, boom, done. Let's go ahead and check the render. Uh, it usually goes into images and there it is. I've got all my frames. And the next step is to composite um, in After Effects, Adobe After Effects. So that's the next step, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and get that done. I'm gonna open up After Effects. And you can composite this in other programs also. Uh, I've done a video that I composited a, um, an animation that we rendered from another program uh, in iMovie. So you could use iMovie to composite it as well. Uh, I've got uh, After Effects open and I'm going to import the image sequence. All I have to do is uh, find it and it's in the images folder. Uh, click only on the very first one. That's all I need to do uh, because it knows it's a JPEG sequence. So make sure that this is clicked on importer JPEG sequence. Click on one and then open it and it imported it as a, uh, as a one single file as a movie. I'm gonna drag this over here to my timelines in my layers. Uh, it drops it and it this composition actually retains 
all of the properties of this file. Therefore, if we go to composition settings, um, this is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second uh, and the duration is two seconds. We can change that before we even do this. I'm gonna delete this composition. This one, uh, right click, uh, interpret footage, main, and I can uh, change the frame rate here to 24. Say okay, and do the same thing. I'm gonna drag it to my layers to create a composition. And if I go to my composition settings, again, uh, it's called bounce ball, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. And now it's uh, two seconds and 12 frames. And so if I hit the space bar to play, it's exactly what we rendered from Maya, except uh, it's now here, composited in After Effects. All I have to do now is go ahead and export this using Media Encoder. It'll open up Media Encoder. Here we are in Media Encoder. It opened it up. Here it is. Uh, and you can check to see what settings you have. Uh, here I have a H.264, which will render an MP4. And there's a bunch of settings that you could do. I'm not gonna mess with this. This will, this will be for maybe another video. I'm gonna cancel that. Uh, the way you render it is you click on the output file and we're going to save it right on the desktop. It's gonna be called Bounce Ball and it's an MP4. I'm gonna hit save. And then I'm gonna hit this little green arrow to start the rendering. Uh, it'll render out, done. I'm gonna, Go ahead and uh, close this, hide this, and go to my desktop, open it up. Here it is. It's full on HD, uh, 1920 by 1080. Click on it, and there it is. Composited in After Effects, animated, and rendered in Maya. All you have to do is make sure that you check your uh, render settings every single time and make sure that you set the project folder where you want these to go. It'll tell you exactly where it's going. And then that's it. Uh, hit the render button and render it. Uh, hey guys, I hope that you've uh, liked the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and uh, hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you guys.